You may be asking yourself, why do we have so much food in front of us? One, because we're hungry, but two, because we wanted to buy every single discontinued food from not only our childhood, but probably some of yours as well. And I feel pretty good about most of these, but then there's a few of them, like these 30-year-old Altoid citrus sours that may be upsetting our stomachs a bit. All right, so first up we have Altoids. Now they still continue to make Altoids, but these citrus sours in particular were discontinued in 2010 after low demand. So these busters are going for $65 on eBay right Right now. Wow. Right, so let's crack this open and see what we got. Ooh. This thing hasn't been opened in 20 years, I think. Uh, it'll probably still be pretty fresh. Yeah. It was like wrapped well. <laughs> oh, what? That looks like gushers. Mm. This is no longer Altoid uh -uh. Sours. This looks like raisins. Oh God, no. It, it looks exotic. Maybe okay, it's hard. It's not mushy at least. Oh, I thought it was gonna be like very sticky. <laughs> it's like uh, gold. It, it's crispy. Let's give it a try. 20 year old Altoid Sours. You know what? They're so hard. It still yeah. retains its shape. I mean, do I want them back? Not that they're gonna taste like this, but I could see these being good and sought after at the time. And I can see why people are mad that they were discontinued. Yeah, if this was like fresh and it had just more flavor, because the flavor is pretty like expired, honestly. That is very expired. So do you say bring it back or leave it in the past? I mean, we've got lemon drops, right? Like that candy that you get in the movie theaters. Yeah. And these taste just like it. We don't need another one of those. All right, so Altoid Sours, let's shelf them. Get yeah, rid of them. Shelf them. Yeah. They're, they're fine with their, they can, they can just keep doing mints. Altoid Sours, leave them in the past. Next up we have Betty Crocker's Dunkaroos. You may have brought this to lunch. I'm sure many people have used this in a lunch bag in the past. This is a staple of kids' lunches when you were like in middle school. This thing was discontinued in 2012 after I think kids were just eating too many like high sugar items. So there was a push by the FDA to ban certain foods and they didn't want to get around to being banned. So they just decided to discontinue it. And there was a big demand for Dunkaroos back in 2020. And so they ended up bringing them back in 2021, which is how we got our hands on them. So this was gone for 10 years, but now they're back. Uh, right. it, it's a different design for sure. It's yeah, not your classic and Dunkaroo. There's those puppies. I thought they used to be sticks that you dipped in. Yeah, what is, like, this is like really cracking. small. And they put D on it. They're trying to market themselves, I guess, to us, but let's give it a taste. Now these aren't expired. So these are actually like- Okay, for, okay, I was, I was a little uh, frightened. Yeah, February 26th of next year. A little fresh. Yeah, they seem pretty tame. So all it is is just icing and then like a little sugar cookie. Yeah. It's just eating sugar. We're just eating sugar in two different uh, Yeah, forms. it tastes like like cake batter, like flavor. They're like actually not that bad though. I no, think they're good. Dunkaroos but... retain their decent taste. All right, so Dunkaroos, I mean, I'm bringing them back. They are back, so that's, this one kind of doesn't count as much, but I'm glad they brought them back. So in 2006, planters made the difficult decision to a lot of people's surprise to discontinue their cheese curls, which were competitors to Cheetos and all those other cheese brands. And there was a, a large protest and outrage from the public. I think they're deciding right now if they want to bring them back. There's like a big discourse within planters about these. But we got our hands on a couple, and so we're gonna try this out to see whether they should bring it back, or maybe they should leave it in the past and concede to Cheetos. I think competition's good. I think uh, if we have another Cheeto competitor. We can't have a Cheeto monopoly. Let's see. They're not bad. Where do these rank compared to, you know what, bust them out. Cheetos. All right, all right, we're gonna have to do a, so a we also have one. Cheetos Flaming Hot, which were banned across many schools in the United States, including ones in New Mexico and California, uh, because they were not only really hot for the kids, but it was also very messy. And I guess it was like getting on the furniture and stuff within schools. So these are banned, but we're now gonna compare them because I think it makes a lot of sense to compare like for like. So Flaming Hot, if you live in a state that allows them, you're still probably seeing these in your grocery stores. In New Jersey, I don't think that they have these much. So, you know, this is a delicacy. <laughs> this was imported. This was imported from New York. I don't know how hot Hot what actually are, are they? I mean, hot enough for some people. Maybe it like burns your skin if you leave it on there for too long. I miss these. This is just bringing, oh wow, it's, it's got a little heat to it. Yeah, no, it's definitely got that kick. And, it, and besides the spiciness, it does have a little more of like a cheesy flavor than the planters. We got guns. Horses, bulls, spicy chip, spicy chip. It, so it naturally it should just be something that's part of our culture. Why are we removing absolutely. this? Because we're scared of what the administration has to say on, on school boards. I say enough of them and I say, bring back both of them. Bring back the spice. So next up we have lime Skittles. And you may be asking yourself, aren't the green Skittles lime? But they're actually green apple. And in 2012, Skittles made the decision to swap out lime for green apple. And then when people caught on to it, they were like, why don't you, like what? Why are you doing this? Skittles brought back for a little bit it, the lime version, it was a limited edition one that they sold and they ultimately pulled it about 10 years back. So now you can't get your hands on a lime Skittle unless you go on eBay and buy these for $55, something like that. Wow. A relic, but we got our hands on it. And so we were going to try it. This is the share size package. It's kind of sad sometimes opening these items because like I'll never have this again, probably in my life. So yeah, and once you open it, it's like, 
The clock is ticking. Is it the you thinking that lime is too spicy? Let's like, try it. Oh, green know. apple. This would be a good flavor for the, the sour Skittles. It's inherently a, like a, a sour flavor. I bet they took it out of the regular Skittle pack because it kind of throws off the mildness of all the other flavors and this could be overpowering. The more I taste it, I could actually tell the difference. I, like when I'm eating a green, it's just less, less aggressive to my buds, like a green apple Skittle. It just feels like something, something for the palate. This is definitely more of a shock to me, I think, when I'm eating this. It feels like I'm eating like a unique flavor. I think leave it. I, I think green apple, it's like, it's close enough. I mean, it's fun. They should bring it back every once in a while, like for their, you know, 30 year anniversary. Here's like all the yeah. flavors we discontinued. All right, so I was absolutely bamboozled because I bought Ouch Gum, which you'll remember was very popular in the 90s. And it's just bubble gum. And look what I was delivered. Empty wrappers. No, are we, are you serious? Yeah. Nothing. They bamboozled me. Nothing. I ordered this entire pouch for, I think, $50. Oh my. And they gave three empty wrappers. So something that I was looking forward to having, I don't know if you've ever had this before, but classic gum. Yeah, no, I, before I, I, Hubba I've Bubba. had these. Yeah, no, th these were, these were from before the Bubba. And I just got duped. So this is an absolute waste. I don't, like, that's a disappointment. Now it's just a paperweight, it's a prop. Don't even bring it back, cause it's just gonna piss me off now. <laughs> So no more ouch gum. So now we have Kool-Aid Bursts and they still make a version of this, but this particular design is banned in Maine because it interferes with their EPA regulations uh, regarding like plastics and stuff. Of course, Maine. Um, and I just think this, like the uh, the chemistry of it is different in this one. The ingredients that they used for this version that we're about to drink, it, it's been like refined over the years. So this is like a traditional Kool-Aid Burst. Mm. And you would have had this back in 2005. Like original Coke. The original Coke, this has, you know, all the <laughs> things in it. Let's start bouncing from the walls. Let's see. What? That little crown. Oh, 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 oh that's annoying. Nice. All right, cheers. Oh my God, that is all sugar. That's crazy that kids drink these in school. Oh, what a shame. Kool-Aid man, I think that you have your place in society as a great mascot, but I think your drinks are garbage. I think they're made of disgusting ingredients. It's just pure sugar. So I'm gonna say shelf this. I think we keep it discontinued. All right, so these cream savers are discontinued. So the reason being is pretty interesting. So they were actually sued because a child choked on this and died. And so there was a request to put holes in the middle. So there was airflow that could go through. Oh. And rather than just redo Doing all their candy, they decided to just discontinue. So they're quite small. I don't think I've ever had this before. I've had maybe their competitors. This is obviously before that they had the pressure to put holes in it. So this is like this is three like hole. A, it's got a little divot, but it, it can't divot. circulate. Like yeah, you can't get air through there. Well, okay. What about like um, those peppermints? Like that you get at like a restaurant when you walk. I mean, those these no, are like this. nobody's choked on it. So there's just the pressure. It's just an unfortunate circumstance. Oh. This is a very like 80 plus. Oh, Gen X. What's the generation? Gen Alpha? No, what's the old generation? Well, didn't they call them Gen Y? I think it's maybe Gen... Either way, this is a candy for Gen Y. Like if you're 95 years old, you can't chew and swallow <laughs> food, you put this in your mouth. I'm not satisfied with this. I'm gonna no. spit this out right now. Actually. No, yeah, nasty. So the Wonder Ball used to be made by Nestle. Could not get my hands on that one, but now Frankfurt makes a Wonder Ball. And basically what it is, is a ball of chocolate. And then on the inside, similar to a Kinder Joy surprise egg, there's a toy. And so as you can guess, it was discontinued because because children were choking on the toy in the middle of the Wonder Ball. This was one of my favorite growing up, like candies, because I love milk chocolate. And I also like a nice little surprise on the inside of my milk chocolate, be it caramel, yeah. be it a toy, whatever it may be. And they used to decorate these with like Disney characters. I guess now LeBron James is their Disney character. They just throw them Oh, and they, oh, LeBron James can be one of, the, uh, one of the toys inside. There's a bounce ball inside. So let's check our luck right now with this Wonder Ball to see if we can get LeBron James <laughs> bouncy ball. <laughs> a one out of 10. Oh, that's nasty. So there's a hole in this already. It looks like this thing is like, <laughs> It oh. looks like somebody did something to this. Oh no. Someone busted right into there. But we got Tweety Bird. We, so we didn't get, unfortunately, uh, no LeBron James for us. No, yeah, that, that one's a common one. That's but, a stinker right there. Let's see if this still holds up as decent milk chocolate as I remember. I taste dust on it. I don't even, yeah, I don't, I don't taste chocolate. It's just dust. Are we even, oh. are we even doing the tabs? Ta taking the tabs? I'm not taking that. They're nasty. <laughs> oh, this, yeah, that's gonna, that's gonna send us uh, oh, down a trip. Okay, so Orbit's drink launched in 1997 and it was discontinued one year later after <laughs> low demand. I mean, I wonder why. What? <laughs> but mean, we put balls in it. So like this it, was like boba oh. tea before boba tea. It has these little like Orbeez inside it basically. And as you can see, there's a lot of rust on our cap because this is from 1997. How do they think this was a good idea? Who made this company? Yeah, like right in the middle. <laughs> Ass. Oh, wonderful. I can't wait to go next. Oh boy, I wonder if they got it. 
Ah. You like it, I think. What the? No, no, get out of here, bro. Ah. All right, so just like a lot of the other fallen foods before, Fruit Loops straws were released in 2007, and then because of pushback, because of too high sugar foods in people's diets in 2009, they pulled them off the shelves. Only to be now re-released, and they even say it's kind of cute, they are back in the top left oh, on your screen. So you can see nice. that, you know, they're actually excited about the fact that they're back and they're marketing it as such. So I think that this is gonna be something um, fun because I've had these in the past, I know, and they were always a good time when you just put it in like the milk and you drink it up. Yeah, it gives you, I mean, it, it essentially like kind of flavors your milk into, you know, a subtle cereal flavor. Pour it in here and let's see if it works. It works. I uh, mean, like, right. obviously, but <laughs> Whoa. sometimes, like, no the way. integrity of these are in question. Mm -hmm. It actually works really nicely, too. It's like a solid structure. Oh, yeah, that's good. And, I mean, if we're going to have, like, paper straws, like, talk about... Fruit Loops yeah. straws. Yeah, yeah. we just Fruit... make food straws. I don't want, like, soggy paper straws. I won't be upset if I get a soggy Fruit Loop straw. I feel like most of the companies that already brought back the foods, they get it. They know that they had to bring it back. It was good on them. This is something that I think the kids are happy about. So now we have everybody's favorite chocolate milk, Nesquik. And, yes, at a time, they did make cereal, so this is called their Nesquik milk chocolatey cereal. Its competitor was Cocoa Puffs, and they say that's the reason they discontinue the product, because they couldn't get enough of the market as opposed to their competitor, Cocoa Puffs. So they still create this in some parts of the world. I believe this is from Canada. So in Canada, they're still making it. Now, it looks just like Cocoa Puffs. It smells a bit milk chocolatier compared to it's... Cocoa Puffs, which is maybe a bit richer. Oh, yeah. I think I like this as much as I like Cocoa Puff. I think they're basically, to me, one for one. They kind of do the same thing. If anything, this one does feel a bit lighter. It's not as chocolatey. I don't think I like it more than Cocoa Puffs. All right, so another cereal now is Waffle Crisp by Post, and this was discontinued in 2012 for similar reasons to everything else. There just wasn't the demand there for it. But they brought this back, actually, in 2021. Not in all huh. markets. I'm not sure if this is in the United States. Let me, let me know if you guys have eaten this recently. We're going to give it a try because I've certainly never had these before. Now, they look like little waffles. I mean, it's what it says. It's a waffle crisp. Very thick waffles. It's giving me like Eggo waffle vibes. Don't they have a cereal too? Or they tried maybe some limited, limited thing too. I'll wait for you to say what you have to say. They're not as good in milk. I love the cereal. Really? I could eat a whole bowl of this, bro. You don't like this? I, the reason I was gonna, uh, that I think that is just the, a little bit of the flavor. Like it was almost more intense um, mm. without the milk. Could I eat a whole bowl of this? Yes. Like it's, I'm not. <laughs> Could I down this? Like it, it has everything it needs to be like addictive. It's um, just a sugary cereal at the end of the day. I, I could eat it dry. Cereal. I could eat it, you know, with milk. I'm just happy that this is back because I might actually buy this or I might keep this in my cabinet and have this like once a year <laughs> or something. Yeah. I'm not a big cereal guy, but that was an interesting taste for my palate. All right, so Scooby Snacks by Betty Crocker were discontinued and then reintroduced with a different formula because they wanted to make it healthier with less artificial flavoring and ingredients. And so what we have here in this beat up box that I got off of eBay <laughs> is the original Scooby Snacks in their form with all their artificial dyes, Red 40 and such. Mm, get, yeah, get, <laughs> so, give it to me. This will really bring out the nostalgia. Yeah, I, I, I remember having these uh, as a kid. They definitely taste aged. You could tell yeah. that these things are starting to melt. The gelatin is no longer keeping its form. Yeah, and it like holds on to your teeth. Like it's actually hard to, to separate. Me, your mouth. I'd go as far as to say that they're bad. Yeah, they're not great. Not great at all. Scooby Snacks, we got a shelf. Keep this discontinued. I mean, they brought it back. It's probably better now. Better for you, at least. But the original yeah. one, I mean, I, I mean, yeah. This. If you if you came out with better flavors, which hopefully they did, then maybe. But yeah. But if you thought those were bad, here are some of the worst gummy bears out there, and they look very innocent. Sugar-free, gluten-free, vegan, keto-friendly gummy bears. But Haribo actually released sugar-free gummy bears. Uh, I think it was like. 15 years ago now, and they immediately had to pull it off the shelf because this was acting as a laxative for people. Yep. So if you have two or three of these, apparently you're gonna spend two or three minutes in the bathroom, maybe longer, honestly. How, how do they insist, like, well, we have to put this ingredient in there, otherwise it's not sugar-free. Yeah, they don't, it smells like plastic. Oh, and they're vegan too, so they they, they don't use gelatin. Yeah, because that's uh, it's made from like, Horse bones. It tastes okay. It doesn't taste like really anything, but it's zero sugar. It's not like trying to be something. Yeah, I, I could see these being like dangerous because the flavor isn't like inoffensive and they're quote unquote healthy. So 
you'll be having a lot of these. And then, before you know it, before you know it, you're, uh, you're crawling to the bathroom. Keep it discontinued just for health purposes. Yeah, just find, find a substitute to, to keep it sugar-free and not run into the bathroom. So similarly to Skittles, so I guess it's something that Mars just does, but they unfortunately have to cut some of their flavors, at least in the 2000s they did this. Like once a year, they would look at some flavors, identify which ones were low performing and then cut them. So they got rid of crispy M&Ms, which a lot of people were shocked because they apparently loved them. They had like a very niche excited fandom around the crispy M&Ms. And they brought this back in 2015 for a couple of months and then they got rid of them again forever. So now this is from 2015, I believe. So this is almost 10 years old. Wow. Crispy M&Ms off of eBay vintage. And we're gonna try them out. So I don't know what the crispy means. Maybe it means there's like some crunch to it. Like what is crispy? It's like fried. Uh, yeah, it's definitely gonna be like airy inside. I don't know, maybe nougat. So they look like normal M&Ms. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, here, let me get a little bit. Oh, they're, they're kind of bulbous and just big. They, they kind of look like um like peanut, peanut M&Ms. M&Ms. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're a little big. Go ahead and try these. Oh yeah, I should get a little, a small handful. They are crispy. It's kind of malty. It's like a peanut M&M, but there's no peanut in there, but it still has that chew of a peanut M&M. Yeah, I like the texture. It, it does for pe people that can't have peanuts, don't like peanuts. It is a good alternative for that same experience. Maybe tastes a little funky, maybe because it's 15 years old. I, I could attribute it to that, but. Yeah, these are definitely expired. Used before February, 2022. Yeah, but these so, are fun. Crispy M&Ms, I wouldn't bring them back because there's so many M&M flavors, but I'm glad that these existed at some point in time and that people could get their hands on these. Yeah. So keep them on the shelf. Maybe like every 10 years, you bring it back for a month, get people excited, then pull it, bring yeah. it back, repeat. For Halloween or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So now we have Pepsi Blue. Yes, that's right. It is a berry flavored Pepsi. So in 2002, they introduced this. And then to nobody's surprise, I mean, this thing tanked. They sold no 17 way. million over two years, which seems like a lot, but I guess to Pepsi standards is very low. So they pulled this and it became sort of a meme. So there's the American flag on it, as you can see. So very patriotic. This used to be our drink. Pepsi had a play in nationalism. I guess like right after 9-11, this was released actually. Okay, yeah. And it's supposed to be patriotic Pepsi. As you can see, it's kind of lost its structure over time, and that's just because this thing has been shelled for almost 20 years. But it should be good enough to drink. It looks safe, right? Yeah, it's still got a nice blue, sh blue color to it, so that should be okay. Is it cola? It doesn't have any... It. I'm not surprised it doesn't have any fizz. Oh no, oh no. Give that a smell. Oh, it's, it's, like, it's worse than the Kool-Aid, honestly. This is gonna be like Kool-Aid, basically. That's crazy that that existed at some point. Take a sip of that. Oh, no. Just take a sip. Here, yeah, yeah, yeah. It just, like, what am I drinking? Oh, oh, it, it, it's like Dawn dish soap. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> it tastes exactly like dish soap. Ah. If you were the head of product at Pepsi and yep. somebody brings this to you, this concoction, and you take a sip, you need to be immediately fired if you green light this yeah. to be going Bl out. Blacklisted product. from the industry. This is an abomination Stop. of a soft drink. It's not even a soft drink. There's no carbonation to it, but it's not a juice. So it's like, I don't know what it's, it has no identity and it just tastes like soulless. So another flub of Pepsi came in the form of Crystal Pepsi, which is just clear Pepsi. They wanted to market it as a healthier cola, despite it having 250 calories in the bottle. Uh, and I guess you were supposed to fool people because it doesn't look like soda, but it still is supposed to taste like soda. The issue with this, other than it being obviously like a, a foolery, it's not actually healthy, is that it didn't taste like cola. And so it's basically false marketing because uh, you think you're drinking Pepsi and you're just drinking something that now has no Pepsi identity, similar to the Pepsi Blue. So I think the trend for Pepsi right now is like, if you release something that's not cola, it's not gonna do well. So why do they keep releasing things that aren't cola? Yeah, they're disguising them as cola, but they're not. They're like, sir, look what I, look what I made. It's clear. It's like, oh great. So it's like a clear cola. Well, yeah. No, no, it's just, it's just clear. Uh, oh, so, but it's healthy. It's like zero calories diet. No, it's still the same calories as a cola. But so it's like, so. Does that at least taste like cola? No, it doesn't have that caramel flavoring in it. So what does it taste like? I'm actually very curious. Wait, you're the same guy who who did the Pepsi Blue. Get the, yeah. get out of here, get this man out. Okay, so that had a little bit of carbonation <laughs> that came up. All right, it's got some freshness to it, I guess. Oh, no. <laughs> That, oh, that's the face I love to see. Uh, it tastes like tonic water. That's not a Pepsi. I don't know, like, what is that? Uh, I, I gotta try that again. 
I think you like it. I like you it. Double dipping. I like it better than the blue. I'll, You're I'll double dipping that. on the crystal Pepsi. It's iconic. I'll give it that. It's like the best publicity flavor, like publicity stunt flavor. I'm not saying the flavor is good in itself, but it's like, oh, the presentation. I like that retro uh, label on there. It, I mean, yeah, the cola flavor is like very subtle. It, it's nearly absent. It looks like white vinegar. I would pass on that. I think that it's good that it's off the shelves. It exists in some countries. That's why this is in decent shape because they at least more recently had this available. Oh, oh my God. No. <laughs> Please drink me. I'm delicious. Oh, oh man, my God. The presentation's wonderful. Okay, so the hardest thing that I had to get my hands on was Sprite Remix Tropical Flavor. I have to show you what this looks like. Yeah. So they swore that I couldn't get my hands on one. Now, if you'll notice, this has a slightly green yellow tint to it, and this is a smushed bottle, meaning that this thing has been pretty much like buried for 25 years because people obviously don't want to yeah, drink this. Yeah, this was exhumed from like the grave. So this was made in 2003. So it really is a 20 wow. year old Sprite Remix. Wow, wow. Uh, this might be like the the oldest thing that we're gonna try today, other than the Altoid Sours. So let's see. The oldest beverage. And the, oh, the Orbits. The, oh, God. The, no. That was good. Wait, did you just say that was good? <laughs> <laughs> don't 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 send me back. Yet. Okay, so definitely a little bit of not rusting, but something's on there. It's like it's like the dye of like the red Ugh. plastic. Oh, let yeah. me get a straw because I don't want to put my lips no, on that. No, yeah, definitely not. There, there's just some weird chemical reactions that that scientists have never seen. It literally smells like pee, like a little bit of pee. Oh, there's no way that they used to serve this. Look at this. It's disgusting. This doesn't feel like I should be drinking this. The, the world's smallest sip, if you want to survive. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. I, can, okay, I can tell this guy like Oh, that. that's disgusting. <laughs> you're, you're not gonna swallow? No. Uh, all right, all right. Now, now I'm real curious. Oh, got like a nice gulp of that, baby. It's putrid. You're going back. <laughs> you love it. <laughs> he loves it. <laughs> <laughs> He loves it. I, I just, I need, I needed to like double check that if what was I was like tasting. You thought it was. Oh, this is disgusting. I will never drink a Coca-Cola product again because you guys released this. <laughs> This is disgusting. You should be ashamed of yourself. You literally people. lost, you lose customers like with this. I might be like invested in them, pulling it. Don't care, it doesn't matter. This is disgusting. This is a drink that you should be ashamed of. If you're watching this and you work at Coca-Cola, quit. They, they hired the, the, the Pepsi Crystal and Blue guy. <laughs> yeah, these two jump ships. All right, so this is now Honest Tea, which is another Coca-Cola drink. This time they actually have something good because this is just green tea, organic, meant to be healthy. It's zero calories on Sweden. It was just discontinued because because Coca-Cola was no longer making any revenue from it, and so they decided to uh, just take it off the shelves. There's also a lot of better iced teas out there, but at least this will kind of cleanse our mouths after that disgusting drink we just put in there. Absolutely horrible. That, yeah, that, <laughs> it's good enough to do that. Oh yeah. Yes. Oh yeah, baby. Mm. Just some classic tea. It's just what you want, it's honest oh, tea. Just revitalizing. That's... You know what, everything I just said, I was like, just some classic tea. So they have the word just on there. They, they know what you're thinking. An honest tea. And it's it's called honest tea. That's all it is. Just just green tea. It's, it's not getting a reaction out of me. It's just it's good. It's, it's tea. fine tea. It's had this a billion times. So going along the lines of more Coca-Cola products is Fruitopia. So this is uh, something in 2003 that a lot of people had. They used to sell it in smaller pouches as well. And they decided to discontinue this. And then they rolled this into their Minute Maid line because it made more sense to put those sorts of flavors together. Yeah. And so Fruitopia was off the shelves, but now you could kind of find the same sort of flavoring like apple juice and such in Minute Maid, but Fruitopia was definitely a big thing. I think this one is French. So again, Canada. If you go to Quebec, you could probably get your hands on everything you've seen in this video so far. Yeah, and you bring that right over the border and you start like selling that on eBay? Like, bro, you're- Arbitrage. <laughs> exactly. Let's bust this open. This also isn't expired. It this expires is in 2024. Okay, so this okay. Is just, it's apple juice. It's good to go. It's been refrigerated, so this is all, all kosher. It's apple and it must be some other flavors, right? It's like apple, pear, strawberry, passion kiwi, fruit. passion fruit. Okay, that sounds nice. It's like a juice V8. Like, try it out. 
now. Oh yeah. I, I mean, I, I've seen their stuff on like soda cans, I think, but I, I always thought it was like a fruit soda or something like that. Um, and it's made with real fruit. But yeah, no, this is like, yeah, this is like real. Oreo Cakesters, and I know what you're saying, oh, they still exist. That's true, but they didn't always exist because there was a 10 year period in which Oreo Cakesters were gone because of low demand. They recently brought them back. I haven't had one since they brought them back, so it must have been closer to 10, 15 years since I've had one. Uh, when was the last time you had an Oreo Cakester? I had one probably like a year ago, right when they were like fresh mm -hmm. on like, you know, on the market reintroduced. And it was the first time I had them and they're good. They're, they're a good snack. There they are, good old Oreo Cakesters. A little dry. Yeah. It doesn't really taste like an Oreo. It does taste very much like a, a devil dog or like a Twinkie mm -hmm. or a chocolate. Yeah, it's just like a cakey good. Yeah, and they're like, they look like fat Oreos. Yeah, these are thick Oreos. And I, you know what, they're pretty solid, but just not like my cup of tea. I wouldn't, I don't like cakey things regularly, but when I have it, it's fun. Yeah. So yeah, good, glad it's back. Speaking of treats, we have Twinkies, the ones that can survive nuclear blasts, right? You remember sure. that? They used to say that a Twinkie could survive like a nuke. Oh yeah, these Twinkies are, and cockroaches. Yeah, these are the roaches of, uh, of just snacks. All right, so each cake is 140 calories, so this is more than the Oreo cakes and while these were gone for some time, they are officially back as Twinkies. Yeah, no, like there was an uproar. People get upset when there's like trash food mm -hmm. and they're like, oh my God, get this off the market, please send it to Canada. Here, they're like, no, 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 please, please. Like, are you serious? You can't, like this will literally keep your company afloat if you just were selling these. Just sell Twinkies. Like, why are you even playing? Just billion, sell Twinkies. Billion dollar market right here. Garbage. Twinkies are garbage, dude. I've never liked Twinkies. This is disgusting. So this right here was my little surprise and gift to Sam and and, our, and just everyone here. It's uh, the mac and cheese Van Leeuwen's flavor. And right now it's currently available. It just came out like last month, but um, it's limited edition. So we're not gonna see it for long. And it's probably good that we won't have this for long. Yeah, so he came bearing gifts and he brought Kraft mac and cheese ice cream. And of course that's an item that should probably be included in like a disgusting foods video, but it's also going to be discontinued at some point. So we're gonna try it out. The Van Leeuwen's Kraft Mac and Cheese Ice Cream. It, it's, it's got the yellow. The, it's got that yellow orange cheese. <laughs> you do the honors. I'm not digging in first. I don't All even right. like mac and cheese, so. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, I mean, that, that's an me. American staple too. All right. It looks like oh, sherbet. Oh gosh. Try it out. Smell? Don't smell it. All right, here we go. Oh my gosh, that tastes like mac and cheese. It tastes like a grilled cheese. That's disgusting. <laughs> you brought that to my house? <laughs> this is what you came bearing? This was the gift he came I'm back. I'm so sorry. This is disgusting. This is the worst thing I've ever eaten in my life, dude. I thought, it's yeah, cheese I, ice cream. That's so nasty. I'm, I'm so sorry. I thought I thought that they would have, you know, done like some kind of. Ew. I thought they make it taste like great. I mean, it tastes like mac and cheese. I don't I don't know what I was thinking. Oh my gosh. All right, guys. Well, that's the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more content, make sure to click here. Click here. Otherwise, subscribe on your way out, and I'll see you next time. Peace.